So this is a really tough piece for many people. Some people get really uh, nervous around handling a sales conversation, and especially when the prospect doesn't automatically buy. Part of the objection handling process is initially actually asking for the sale. So I'd always encourage that to get to this section of dealing with objections, you actually must ask for the sale. Because otherwise, you'll never get an objection in the first place. Okay? And the hardest objection to deal with is when there's no objection at all because you can't actually help. So it's important that we get people to a point of either sale or objection. And if it's an objection, we can see can we alleviate their concerns and deal with that objection directly. So when we come to dealing with objections, one of the most important pieces that you must do is isolate the objection completely. So find out exactly what it is that the person is objecting to. So for example, somebody might say, it's a bit too expensive. Now if I was to ask that person, just so it's clear in my mind, when you say it's too expensive, Sarah, what exactly do you mean? And Sarah might say, well, I don't get paid until two weeks time. Okay, cool. So it's not actually too expensive, it's that the frequency or the timing right now isn't exactly correct. So if I was able to fix that, obviously you'd be keen to get started today. And that's a way to really fine tune and isolate the problem. So again, dive in and isolate exactly what the issue is. So if, if somebody says a really vague answer to an objection, like, oh, it's kind of the price, or I don't know if I can, or whatever it is, we need to dive in and isolate and find out what exactly they mean. So in order to do that, here's a really simple phrase that I'd encourage you to use. I would say something like, just so it's clear in my mind, what exactly do you mean by insert objection name? So just so it's clear in my mind, Sarah, when you say pricing, what exactly do you mean? And again, this isn't really salesy, this is just me trying to find out so I can help. So that's really important, so isolating the objection. Now, trailing backwards a bit through the needs assessment program that we talked about earlier, we're gonna preempt in that process some of the potential problems. So we've already potentially, kind of in our heads at least, dealt with the potential problems. So what I mean by that is, let's say if somebody comes in and they may have a partner uh, or they may have you know, a, a, a low income job and price could be an issue or their partner could be an issue. Well, we need to sort of subtly deal with those issues, not now in the pricing section, but in the needs assessment section earlier on and sort of have them finished and dealt with. So now when at the end of the sales process, if they come back to us and they say, I don't think I can afford it, we can then use what we've learned to help them make the right decision. So we could say in this scenario, Sarah, do you remember when we spoke earlier, you mentioned that you're now spending 25 bucks a week on cigarettes. Do you not think you could use that towards your membership? And then you start, you justify and you start to uh, logic driven, uh, you, you sort of, you focus the person back on the right tasks at hand. And you make sure that they understand what's happening and they understand why this does make sense. So again, preempting the problems can be really useful. So another example would be, um, some people would say that they need a 24 seven facility to exercise in. Now, if we were at the end of the sales conversation and we said, so we'll get you joined up today then, and they said, are you 24 seven? They could be saying that as a way out. Now they may not want to train at 24 seven hours at 2 a.m. or whatever. So how we would deal with that in the preemptive strategy is in the start of the sales process in the needs assessment program, we'd be asking questions like, Paul, what times will you normally train? And Paul might say, 9 a.m., Monday to Friday. Well, now at the very end, if Paul says, are you 24 seven? I'll say, no, Paul, I'm not 24 seven. My gym does not operate in 24 seven hours but you're gonna be training at 9 a.m. and then we're certainly open. So it's no longer an issue. So again, we're asking for the sale, we're isolating the objection, we're dealing with the issues early on in the process, before the sales process, and then we're standing our ground, okay? And this is, this is gonna be hard for some people. It's really important that once you isolate and you find out what it is, you go back and you stand your ground with the person. Because remember, we're in the health industry, we're in the health space. When we sell to somebody, we help them. 
they get fitter, they get stronger, they get better, they get healthier, they feel good about themselves. So if I walk away, if I let my fear of selling stop me from helping, we're not moving forward. So we have to stand our ground, we have to help the person understand and see that this is what they need, this is what they want. So standing our ground can look like once we fine tune what the issue is, diving into that and seeing can we help them overcome it. So we might give them potential uh, suggestions. So let's just say it was a time thing where we could suggest different times it might work. If it was a monetary thing, we could look at their budget with them. There's ways that we can help. Now, these are just some of the key cornerstones of dealing with the process. Shortly, we'll look at the exact uh, specifics that will help move through each and every uh, objection that you may face.